Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield at one of Springfield's oldest companies. It used to be called Solomon Grinding Service back in 1927. Mr. Solomon used to buy iron oxide from Michigan and grind it up into pigment here for paints and other purposes. Well now they're into a lot of newer products and since the uh, explosion of the, the uh, concrete business and the way that you can stamp and color concrete now, they service companies and countries all over the world with products that are made here in Springfield. And if you haven't been back here to where Color Plant Road ends on Springfield's north side, you may not be aware of this huge complex back here. But it's 80 acres of buildings, old and new, 100 employees. And the buildings actually date back to the 19, uh, earlier than the 1920s, when this was the water treatment plant and the power plant for the, for the city of Springfield. But this is what they do here now. Mark Ayersman, Solomon Colors is a leader in a field that has really exploded in recent years, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They make, col they make colors for concrete, basically, I guess is what it is, right? Uh, colors and anything that uh, can make concrete look beautiful. That's what we manufacture. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's taken off is because people are, fine, people are using their imagination, aren't they, when they're thinking about their driveways and their patios. And any time, grout work, any, anything that needs, needs concrete can take color, I guess, right? That's right. Anything cementitious, we have uh, mortar colors. Uh, for brick and masonry uh, that, that can color the, the grout lines mm -hmm. and the mortar joints in the uh, masonry products. Uh, we have integral pigments that color concrete. So most people think of concrete as gray and then yeah. you have to put something yeah. on top of it. Uh, what we like to say is that uh, you don't need to cover up the concrete. You just need to make it look nice. Mm -hmm. uh, integral pigment is one way to do that. In fact, you actually have a demonstration plot, right, where you bring people from around the world to want to see what some of the products can look like. Describe some of those products to us. Yeah, absolutely. So decorative concrete is a big field. Uh, you can do a lot of different things to make concrete aesthetically pleasing. Uh, color it. You can texture the surface. You can make it look like natural stone, for example, or brick. And we have uh, urethane products that help imprint that to make that happen. You can polish it. Right, and give it a nice high gloss. It makes it durable. It makes it uh, water and stain resistant, uh, and all those things make uh, concrete look uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, it really. And, and, and like you say, you've got that. You've got the. What do you call it? It's not a demonstration area, but you you have a name for it. Your company. Yeah, calls we it. have uh, Lumber Lane is Lumber the name Lane, of our, yeah. our training center, and we bring uh, people in from all around the world. We've had people uh, there from as far away as India, China, Hong Kong. Uh, Southeast Asia, other countries like that, that come to our facility and we have training staff that shows you how to use these products mm -hmm. on concrete to make it look beautiful. Yeah. And you actually do sell these products all over the world, don't you? I mean, you just all named a number states. of countries. Yeah, 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 all 50 states and about 22 countries right yeah. now, and we're looking to expand that. I, I heard that Australia is maybe your biggest international customer. That's right, yeah. We do a lot of business in Australia, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a great opportunity for us. It's a natural fit. Uh, uh, English-speaking uh, country that already had some history in decorative concrete and Solomon Colors is trying to be there mm -hmm. and be present to participate, participate in that. During this, pro that. During this program we're going to take a we're going to take a real quick, I mean it's 30 minute program so we can't see everything but sure. the plant's fascinating because what the plant does is it, it, uh, it mixes um, colors, uh, liquid colors and also um, uh, powdered colors, right? right. So yeah. it's up to the customer how they want to use this material. Right. The colors start start out as a uh, as a powder. That's the the base is a powder. Mm -hmm. Now Solomon Colors takes the powder. We granulate it or we make it into a, a liquid, which is like a heavy slurry mm -hmm. uh, that we apply into concrete. Now we do that primarily to make it uh, able to be automated. So we have a lot of equipment we build here as well, where we put that pig equipment and it's like a giant paint mixer. Mm -hmm. So you select your your colors off one of our standard color cards and uh, you know the, the basic colors are, are yellow, red, and black, uh, occasionally some white mm -hmm. and you can get this wide array of colors in your concrete. The, the machines take that uh, liquid or that granular pigment and apply it into the concrete according to a recipe that the, the uh, 
operator selects mm -hmm. off the screen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these are sold in smaller batches, but sometimes they're sold, as we're going to see, in, in immense tanks that go to ready-mix plants, and they use it in, in huge quantities, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. We standardly ship it in 4,000-pound quantities. Uh, wow. So it's a bulk product, mm -hmm. and we ship millions of pounds of, e uh, of product a year. But before I let you go, pick up that white bag and yeah. show us what's inside, if you would. Yeah, this is an interesting product called Ultra Fiber 500. Uh, it's a, it's a cellulose-based product, so it starts off in a, in a uh, sustainable forest. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to push the idea of sustainability because the alternatives are, are petroleum-based. So we like this product, it's sustainable, and also the fibers break down. So in each one of these little chiclets is 20,000 individual cellulose fibers. What's it used for? What, what, what does it do? So we like it because it, it disappears in the concrete, but it also makes the uh, surface cracking issues disappear. Ah. So, so if, you're, if you're looking to make your, your concrete beautiful, yeah. you don't want the cracks on the right, surface, right? right? That you're normally used to in gray concrete, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the kind of fiber that will help the concrete. And, and you've got an area to plant here where it's it's measured out and bagged That's and then right. it's sent out to the customer. Yeah, we make it in, in bags like this. Yeah. So this this uh, bag, you take it and you throw it in a ready mix concrete truck and the whole bag breaks down with the fiber as well. I'll be darned. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We're going to get to the plant. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Great. Thank you, Mark. Adam Solomon, this company has been in the family for a long time. Yes. It's How long have you been? 1927. How long have you been with the company? I've been with it for about 11 years full time. And the, my dad had me out here when I was in kindergarten, basically. So, so is that the right? Floor. So I've, yeah. yeah, child label ours. So uh, you, you learn to work at an early age, right? Yeah. Yep. Everybody in the family work? I, uh, growing up, yeah, my sister was helping out with the bottom line when she was, uh, you know, growing yeah. up. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's grown a lot too, hasn't it, over the years? Oh, it's grown tremendously. Yeah, even yeah. you said you've been here 11 years? Yes. Even in those 11 years, you've gotten to the point where you had to add a plant in California. We've had, yeah, we've had multiple additions to this company. I mean, we've, this building we're in right now was just built a, about 10 years ago. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Um, it all starts with pigment, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It does. But way back yeah. when, uh, now, okay. but your great grandpa used to order iron ore from Michigan. Uh, and he would grind it up and he would sell that. that. You don't do that anymore. Now you order your pigment in, don't you? That's correct. So now we bring it in from China, Europe, uh, Brazil, and we, it comes in this form, basically iron oxide powder. And from this, we take this and we blend it with other iron oxide, so yellow, black, reds, and we mm -hmm. blend all that together to make any color you can think of. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the basis also from what we create, liquid color and granular color, and so this is where it all yeah. begins right here. This, this pigment comes it, it, in four primary colors. That's correct. This yellow that we're looking at, yep. red, black, and what, white, or what's the? What's well, the... We, we have white pigment as yeah. well, but basically majority of pigment that we goes out the store comes from yellow, two different types of reds, a yellow tone red, and a dark, darker blue mm -hmm. tone red, and then a black. Yeah. Yep. Now you make liquid, and then you make a, a powdered variety. That's the correct. powdered variety, can't be used the way it is because it's too airy. It's too sticky. It's too That's right. So for automation, we have to make this either into a liquid or a granular mm -hmm. powder Okay. Uh, for automation. Yeah. Basically. We'll see the granular later on, yep. but right now we're going to look at the liquid process. Yep. Some of your customers want to mix it, want, want a liquid to mix in. Yeah, so, so basically it's a large paint machine mm -hmm. you can think of from a hardware store, but this is a massive scale. And well, so let's take a look. One tank here is ba basically 21,000 pounds mm -hmm. per batch that we make. And then we ship this out in 4,000 pound totes to the customer. Mm -hmm. And this goes out and they have a machine that they take the four primary colors we make and then they have an automatic system that automatically weighs out those colors, whatever color you want, thousands of colors you can think of, and that goes dire directly into a ready mix plant. So 22,000 pounds of liquid is being mixed in here right now. That's correct. It's going to be this yellow color and it's then going to be transferred over to one of these totes. Yep. And one of these totes is, oh, only 4,000 pounds. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So the customer receives this, 4,000 pounds of color. This yeah. goes to their color machine. Yeah. And then when they're done with it, they send this tote back to us, and we clean it out, and we reuse it. Yeah. So we fill it up again and send it back out. You even build these totes here, don't you? That's right. Yep. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, we uh, build the totes here, right here in Springfield. Now, what kind of customer needs 4,000, 8,000, 40,000 pounds of, 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 of pigment? What, what, what kind of customer? So... A lot of this goes to the ready mix industry. The ready so mix industry. So ready mix plants, okay. they're sending out a contractor says, hey, I want this color from our color card. 
the ready mix and he says I need 10 yards of that mm -hmm. and the ready mix plant puts that in their computer system we create here in Springfield they put that in the computer system and that automatically weighs up the color directly into the truck mm -hmm. yep. this this plant is not humming right now it's lunchtime but if you look over in this direction you can see that all these totes there are, are, are those empty or full? Those are all empty? Those are all empty, getting ready to be washed. Okay. And then you have all full totes over here behind. Oh my goodness. And these are all here. full. So these yeah. are getting ready to be shipped out. These will be shipped out to customers. Yep. Uh-huh. And what they do is they take these, these pigments that they've ordered from you, and with your coloring system, which they have uh, coded into their computer system, they can mix the color they desire. That's correct. Okay. Well, yep. this is fascinating. Um, we got to see how all that is done. Um, and we still have to get to, the, to see how you treat you got to treat the powder so that you can actually pour it and work with it because it just it just flies around otherwise doesn't it as far as the pigment yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay well let's go on to our next stop what do you say all right let's do it adam there's a lot that goes into the concrete business that uh, that, w that we don't see in, in the dyes and the colors and everything right this warehouse is full of products what four thousand of them different uh, kinds of yeah, products thousands of different products that contractors use to create decorative concrete and, and you make these, them here. All these products are made right here. So you must have engineers and 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 just re really good we construction have, we people. We have chemists. To... We have chemists. We have ex-contractors. We have engineers. Uh, all that work together to develop these products. That's remarkable. So everything's everything's for sale in there, right? That's Anything correct. a contract yep. a, a concrete finisher would need. Yep. And and this is fascinating because we're in a custom area now. This is the stamping area, and this is a good example of the kind of things you make. Here's a stamp. That's correct. Yeah, this is the concrete stamp that we make that contractors use to do stamp patios or driveways. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these have sets where you have multiple stamps that all link together that a contractor uses to make a stamp patio. Mm -hmm. And you also have, okay, we're looking at a table over here, and this, this could be like custom, if somebody wants a customized product uh, for their patio or their driveway or whatever. That's correct. You can create yeah. it here. Yeah, this is your, these are urethane stencils that uh, we can custom make logos. You can see uh, we've done some uh, for the Marines and uh, U.S. Army right there. I love the Marines in the middle, the United yeah. States Marines logo. So uh, yeah, we get requests all the time of us uh, making custom stamps and stencils mm -hmm. here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right on down the line and look at, look at this one here. Yeah, so all of this is imprinted in the concrete. Uh, these, these actually, the contractor leaves, and the next day they come up and I pull them out of the concrete, and it leaves the uh, impression. Mm -hmm. Oh, that stays in for a day. Yep. Okay, and here's one that's really intricate. Yeah, this, so this is like called a skin that we use, and contractors uh, use this. They just want a it's kind of a texture around the whole patio without mm -hmm. much of anything else, but just a texture. And so this is a nice, easy way to stamp mm -hmm. concrete. Using would this skin. stay in overnight again, or would no, this no, come no, right out? No, no, no. Using this the day you're pouring. Uh huh. So you're stamping everything and then you're that's it and you pull it up and you repeat it that's, that's right. why you don't need a whole driveway full of these you just move it keep moving it right typically you want enough stamps to be able to go across the whole driveway and a few to come back mm -hmm. and that way you can you can move a lot quicker yeah. Yeah. yep well here's a whole room full of material that you're now these have been poured right these are made these are poured out of uh, some kind of a plastic this is, material this is, this is urethane mm -hmm. yeah it's two different types of urethanes when they go together you basically have 12 minutes to make a stamp before it hardens up too far. Mm -hmm. So these are all been poured today, and you can do basically two, uh, make two stamps out of one uh, each day. And the stamps on the bottom, we're just seeing the, the smooth side, right? That's correct. Yeah, yep. okay. So you turn them over, well, and you can see here, here's a good example right here, and these are these are sort of like, they look like pavers or bricks Yeah, so this is something. what the concrete's gonna look like after the contractor stamps. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is what we're gonna pour into. Okay, and as, as a matter of fact, we've got the the master of this uh, of this room, the stamp room, is mixing something up for us now. He's going to pour it for us. Do you know where he's going to pour it by any chance? Yeah, we're going to pour this right down here. Okay. Yep. In this ashlar slate. So yep. this ashlar slate texture. Uh, yeah, there you go. This All is the Tony. way at the end. Huh? Yep. This is Tony. Okay. Yep. And this is your urethane. You said that he's pouring in there. This is urethane. Okay. He's pouring in there. Wow. Hey, And so, from the time he mixes the two different urethanes together, he has ba basically 12 minutes of working time to mm -hmm. complete the process of making a stamp. And if, and if he if he's too late, then he has to start over. It's 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 no it's no good, is it? He's he's never too late though. He's <laughs> perfectionist. Very, very conscientious. So he's putting the handle in right now. The stamp. That's mm -hmm. what the contractor uses to pick the stamp up after he's stamping. Mm -hmm. 
And so he has to make sure that the handle is not going through the bottom of the stamp. So mm -hmm. he's pulling it up so it's basically in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, and the stamp is, is going to look like this one next door. It's going to have the same rock or the same stone. Correct. Uh, so once the stamp is cured, we're going to take mm -hmm. that out and it's going to have that impression on uh -huh. the back of it. Fascinating. Adam, without research and development, you just wouldn't come up with new products, and you guys have thousands of products. We have thousands. So you of got years. this going yeah. on all the time, right? Of course, we got to look at what's the next best best thing for mm -hmm. our company as a product line, and so that's what we're doing right here. And who'd have thought mulch, you know, coloring mulch? Obviously, I've seen that on the market, but who'd have thought somebody in your business would get into the business of coloring? We have mulch? a huge capacity of making liquid color, and we're yeah. already in the concrete industry of making liquid color, so we're getting the mulch yeah. now. Yeah. And so from years of R&D, we've come up with a product. You know what's nice sold. about this product? It wears out. Concrete doesn't wear out much, but that's correct. this is every year, boy, you got to reapply Someone needs this. to buy mulch that's every right. year for their yard, <laughs> that's right. so that, that's a good good place that's to right. be. Yep. We can look, this whole table is almost uh, you know, relegated to finishing. You know, because you, you're going you're gonna to finish your concrete product with something that's going to make it last. Right. right. So uh, we're testing sealers here. Sealers. We're always developing new types of sealers for the concrete industry. That's basically protecting the decorative concrete. So you have a nice, uh, you want you pay all this money for a decorative concrete mm -hmm. patio, you want it to be protected. So mm -hmm. we manufacture solvent and water-based sealers. And what we're doing here is adhe adhesion test of the sealers. And, and that's what these, uh, these handles are? This right. is it. So if, what you want to do is if you pull that up, what do we, I don't know, can, can you do that for us? Could you do something like that for us? What, is that what you're doing, adhesion test? Yeah, so basically we're looking at how our sealers interact with current sealers on the market when you put a sealer over another sealer mm -hmm. and also directly to the concrete. And so basically that thing will keep on going until it fails. And then that's mm -hmm. our good reading of what we have. Okay. She, there we ah. go. She made it fail. Okay. <laughs> she made it fail, but and it took so a lot that, to make it so fail. So then that number is what we document, mm -hmm. and then that's what we base when we go against our competition, mm -hmm. so we know where we're at, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, in here, there's, there's other, there's other seal sealants, like different sealers. You know, we have, we're comparing, we're trying to make a water-based sealer look just like a solvent-based sealer, mm -hmm. typically solvent-based or uh, I guess you can say like a wet look. And so we're trying to develop a water-based look, look and there's the, the matte, the matte finish and as well. And you have a matte finish, yep. And of course, you're always dealing with colors, right? We're always dealing with colors. This is the product called Simcoat that we're uh, looking at two new different colors that we can come out with in the market. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're experimenting right here. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mark. Now, we, there, a large part of this business is called granular color. And that's right. where the customer wants to mix the, the, the granule or more of a powdery substance with their concrete instead of the liquid that we saw earlier in the program. Yeah, it's a similar application, Mark. Uh, the granules look almost like colored sand. Okay, so we take the powder, we make it into a colored sand looking product, mm -hmm. and we sell it again in base pigments of yellow, two different uh, shades of red and a black. Okay. Now this machine dispenses those basic colors depending on the color that the contractor that's doing the concrete work would like to put in the concrete. Mm -hmm. Now, this machine, you, you kind of know this machine because you helped develop this machine, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. So at all the equipment you see, we, we saw them in colors, wrote the software, created the hardware, wow. even the frames for the, the mm -hmm. machinery that's all made here in Springfield, Illinois. And, and, and this is all, it's all, all, all these machines are custom made because nobody has needs like you guys do. You have your own special needs. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so tell us how you're going to get this, get this started here. Okay, so. It's a touchscreen operation, and I select a color called shell. It's a yellow color. It tells me how much uh, weight of each pigment that we need. Here, we're, we're just going to do yellow. And as an operator, I say, okay, I, I know what I want. I want one bag of that shell color. And I hit scale in. Okay. Okay. Green light comes on. Yep, green light comes on. That's good, and we're ready to go. I confirm it's there, and okay. I start the batch. All right. Now you'll see yellow pigment flowing. Mm -hmm. And the machine keeps track of the weight and hits the target weight for the amount of pigment you need for that color. Saves a lot of time without having to weigh it, doesn't it? That's correct. And for our customers that resell this product, it's lower inventory. They can only they only have to inventory four colors, and they can do mm -hmm. hundreds of colors. Mm -hmm. Because they have a color code also provided by your company. That's correct. Now, can you bring that out and we can get a look at it? Oh, there yeah. it is. Okay. Now, you know, we saw, before you put your fingers in there, yeah. we saw earlier when we were looking at the, at the liquid color, 
that the pigment is powdery and it almost just flies in the air. Yeah, it's like flour, and right? You, and you have to correct that through a process that makes it granular and not powdery. That's right, because if we tried to, to automate this with powder, it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would bind up. Okay, what's so it look we, like? Yeah, so we create, like I said, it's, it's almost like a colored sand, right? And mm -hmm. it flows very easily. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is, all of this is about automation of the color. Mm -hmm. Now, for the ready mix plant or for the customer that uses small quantities like this, is, is this easy to mix? Yeah, absolutely. So a contractor walks out of the uh, uh, retail shop with this bag, and he takes this bag and throws it in the concrete truck, the whole bag. And the bag itself breaks down. I love and that. The color goes yeah. into the concrete. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got yellow concrete coming out. <laughs> okay. so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Rich Solomon, we met your son, Adam, earlier. And um, he's been with the, uh, he's president of the company, Solomon Colors, right. and he's been with the company, I think he said for 11 years. 11 years, And, that's and you, uh, the CEO, you've been with it a little bit longer. A lot longer, <laughs> yes. Um, I started with my father in 1979, mm -hmm. and we, uh, uh, right out of college, in fact, a little story about that, my dad, I had another job lined up, and my father asked me, he said, hey, I need some help. Yeah. Come work, give it a year, and if it doesn't work out, you can go on and do what you want to do. Yeah. So I've yeah. been here ever and, since. And it worked out. It worked it? out very well. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's quite a company. You know, we've talked a little bit about it. It's an industry leader. A lot of people, even in Springfield, aren't aware of Solomon Colors. That's so right. that's what this program we is all about. We call ourselves the quiet company. The quiet, you are quiet. And you're right at the end of the road. Right, 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 right. Color plant road. Right. Okay, we saw this product earlier. Mm -hmm. Mark introduced us to this product. Yeah, this is Ultra Fiber 500. Uh, this happens to be a one pound bag. We have a one pound and one and a half pound bag. Each one of these bags, are at, is added to a one cubic yard of concrete. Mm -hmm. And so a ready mix producer, when they're mixing the concrete, would throw these bags into the ready mix truck. The material breaks up and becomes uh, fibers. And we have fibers here. I'm gonna reach in here if you don't mind. Yeah, these are, show each, these. These are little chicklets, we call it chicklets. And each one of these chicklets has 2,000 individual fibers. As it gets into the ready mix truck, it dissolves mm -hmm. and the fibers protect the uh, concrete then with the uh, crack control. Um, so that's the purpose of the fibers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you had one pound or one and a half pounds per cubic yard. The trick is, okay, this stuff's available, you can buy it, but the trick is how do you, how do you weigh it perfectly and package it in a way that's economically feasible to sell right. this stuff? Right. And that's what this machine behind correct. us is all about. It's, correct, it's it? amazing how it, how it measures one pound or one and a half pounds of fiber uh, and we can show you in just a little bit yeah. what that looks well, like. Well, let's take, let's describe it for us right now how it does it. It's got these. It's got certain. It's got a baskets up there that that. Right. Uh, There's, th they're, they're in a round, mm -hmm. and each one is measures a certain amount. And, a, and by the computer program, it measures out, and may dump three or four of them at a time to come up with one pound. Mm -hmm. And to ask me how that works, I don't know, but well, it does. It's, it's the wonder of computers. And here's yeah. the thing about this. This was had to be designed and built specifically for you because correct. nobody else has this need. No, that's correct. It's yeah. amazing. They came and we, we sent them some product. Mm -hmm. They tested it. They came up with this machine. And it also takes the material and puts it into little bags. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it does so everything. It's so to we sell. don't have to touch it. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is get the bulk material up, mm -hmm. up there measures out one pound or one and a half pounds, puts it into the seals of the bags, and up, we're ready to go. How neat. It's amazing. Well, Rich, your great-grandfather, no, your grandfather, your dad, and you all in the company, and now your son's in the company. Right. Your wife owns the company with you, I she's, believe. She's part owner. Okay. Yeah. Um, in every company that's been around for a long time, there are pivotal moments. Mm -hmm. And back in, I think it was in 86, you had a pivotal moment. We did, exactly. We had a fire here at the building right over here. And uh, uh, it burnt this entire area right here. Uh, that was 1986. At that time, we were looking at expanding our business. Mm -hmm. But we had to buy the property from the city of Springfield. We were leasing all of this property. Mm -hmm up until 1986. Mm -hmm. And we also had insurance on the building, so my father wanted to take, wanted to rebuild, and the city at that time decided they wanted the insurance money. So that didn't sit very well for no. us. So 
he looked at, uh, the city wasn't interested in selling the property either at that time. So we, we looked at moving our business down to West Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, yeah. Tennessee. Uh -huh. And we looked, we found a location. We came back, and uh, Ozzie Langfelder was mayor at that time, and he got wind that we were looking at moving. So he came out, and he uh, came out to our office. We were just in a double-wide mobile home trailer. Ozzie walks in, says, I'd like to talk to Bob Solomon. We went back to my dad's office, and we sat down and said, I want you to stay here. Uh, and my father said, that'd be great, we'd love to stay here, mm -hmm. but we need the insurance money, and we need to buy the property for us to expand. Mm -hmm. Within a week, we had to, uh, the right? deal was done. Ozzie made, made right? it happen. Well, it I'll was a pivotal what, moment for us because yeah. today, at that time, we had roughly 20 employees. Mm -hmm. We have over 100 employees now. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and and you've expanded to the California, California market as well. As well. So I right. mean, you've you've really built. It it may not have happened in Arkansas. I don't know, or it may have happened, but it's good for Springfield that it didn't happen anyway. Right, and I wanted to stay in Springfield. My father yeah. really did too, yeah. but we just we had no option. Yeah, you've gone yeah. through the years and you've added on since then. I mean, th this area down here now has been. This is where the built. fire was in this area here, so we mm -hmm. rebuilt that. It, mm -hmm. That is where the mobile home trailer was, mm -hmm. and then in 1996. We added on the office that we're in now, mm -hmm. this building right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, then, and, and then in, in 2016, this is the, the latest picture. The 2016. It's 80 acres. It's a big complex, isn't it? Well, we're only using a small portion of the 80 acres. Yeah. Most of the 80 acres is floodplain. We're actually in a floodplain as well, but we're a little higher up where we're mm -hmm. at. This building, the first one here, that you see here, you. this was the latest building that we built, and this is where our uh, production facility is for liquid colors mm -hmm. as well as our color hardener and color release. All of our uh, account managers who take orders are housed there as well. Yeah. So we've added on a, we call it the compound. You have room to expand if you want to. We certainly do. And, and with Adam being his age, there's a very good chance that you all might want to expand in the future. I, I guarantee you we're going to have yeah. to at some point yeah. in time. Okay. I want to thank you for having us in, Rich. Thanks well, thank very you very much, much Mark. Appreciate and, it. And uh, to Adam and, and, and to your wife, too, thank you for, for including That's us great. in your story. Thank you. Um, they serve over 50, 50 countries here with over 100 employees, and they like to call themselves Solomon Colors, the quiet company. Now you've heard of them. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.